Hello and welcome. In this session, we will start learning the basic configurations in Jenkins. So let's get started. And in the last session, we have already seen how do we set up start Jenkins. We have also seen the home directory. Now you can open your Jenkins, start your Jenkins and then go to the Jenkins dashboard and there you will see a link to go to manage Jenkins. So let me show you. In my case, my Jenkins is already running here and I am on the dashboard and here you can see there is a manage Jenkins link. Click here and this will take you to this page and here you can see the system configurations and you can see security configurations, status information, troubleshooting tools and action sections, etc. So here uh, the very basic configurations are here in the system configuration. So you can go here, click and go inside the system configuration and here you can see all these system configurations. So here let us see the very basic and most useful configurations. The first thing you will see is the Jenkins home directory and this is the folder location where Jenkins store all its configuration, data, jobs, plugins, everything. And we have already seen this in detail in the last session. We have already learned how do we change the home directory. So the only thing you have to take care here is so you can see this is the home directory in my case and I had changed it in the last session. So the thing that is important here is that we should keep our Jenkins home folder or directory at a location which has enough disk space as per our usage. So just in case you do not have enough disk space at the default location which is generally C users administrator or whatever is your username and dot Jenkins folder then you can change it and this we have seen in the last session. Then the next configuration is the system message. So here you can see this is the system message. Now this you can put any message here and whatever you uh, write here will get displayed on the Jenkins dashboard. So here you can add any important message that you want the users to see every time they go to the Jenkins dashboard. It can be something related to the, the release, to the build, etc. So whatever you want, you can put it here. Okay. Then we have the next configuration number of executors and here you can change the number it is an integer so the number of executors is a setting that determines how many concurrent builds can be run at the same time okay so how many parallel runs or parallel builds you want to run at the same time you can have the number here now this will also depend on the system configuration where you are running Jenkins so does it have enough configuration CPU memory etc to handle that number of parallel runs or not so this will also depend on that then we have the labels so here the labels configuration uh, here we can assign labels to job and this is something like let's say I say this is uh, I give a label to this particular Jenkins or, or Jenkins running on this particular machine that is Windows machine 1 all right now when I run I can assign labels to the job and uh, there is also this setting usage and here you can see if you see the options it says use this node as much as possible and we also have option only build jobs with label expression matching this node so that means i have given this label to this particular node or this particular machine or this particular jenkins running on this machine and then in the jobs configuration i can say that run this particular job with this matching label and then if I say here only build jobs with label expression matching this node then only those jobs which have the labels Windows machine 1 or matching expression will only be run on this particular node or on this particular Jenkins. Okay. 
and if you want to go more de uh, into detail you can check that you can see how exactly we can uh, use labels in jobs okay and uh, usage as we already have seen this configuration tells Jenkins how to schedule builds on this particular node so if you want to use this node as much as possible or only want to run the jobs matching the label expression that you have mentioned here now all through uh, Jenkins on every Jenkins page you will see uh, some fields have this question mark present with them okay so this is a help section for that particular field or that particular feature for example if I click on this question mark you can see about all the details about this field or feature so this controls how Jenkins schedules builds on this node if you say use this node as much as possible then this is a default setting and in this mode Jenkins uses the node freely whenever there is a build that can be done by using this node okay otherwise the other option is only build jobs with label expression matching this node okay and we have already discussed it so again if you click on question mark it will collapse okay the next setting is the quiet period and this controls how long Jenkins will wait before starting a new build after a previous build has finished okay and it is given in seconds again there is a question mark here you can read more on this here okay so if you do not give any quiet period then you know it will not wait for any time before starting a new build but if you want some quiet period you can do this this can also be given at a job level so let me show you if I go to my dashboard and go to my job this is the job we created earlier I go to the configure page of this job so here you can see if you go to the general section and advanced so you can see the quiet period is here as well and by default it takes the this from the settings from the system settings but you can also overwrite it here okay then we have the next setting SCM checkout retry count so if you see here the next setting is this one SCM checkout retry count and this controls how many times Jenkins will try to check out the source code from the source code management repository or server if there is any error so a lot of times when we run a job we take out we check out the code or some code base from some repository like github and in case that checkout is not successful we can assign how many times should Jenkins retry to check out the source code from the repository so this is the setting about that and again this this setting is also present at a job level and you can also override it here all right so these were the very very basic settings now there are a lot of other configurations here so you can see the Jenkins URL if you want uh, you can put a host name here instead of localhost then the email addresses then global properties pipeline speed durability settings usage statistics again you can see wherever there is a question mark you can check what does that particular feature or field means then we have timeout gradle related settings timestamper then all these notification URL github settings and we have git shell email related settings so a lot of configurations are here now this we can see as and when required if there is any need to go to any of the settings during the sessions we can check that now I will go back to manage Jenkins page and then you can again see there are a lot of other configurations tool related configurations so here if I go to tools you can see uh, if you are using any tools like Maven or JDK, Git, Gradle and all these you can do here all the settings about these tools you can do here then we have plugins now if I go to plugins we will see plugins later as well we have updates where if any of your installed plugins 
has an update available they will be displayed here all those plugins will be displayed here then available plugins the plugins which are not yet installed on your Jenkins but are available to be installed can be found here and here you can also just search so for example I can say pipeline and all the pipeline related plugins will get listed here and then whatever you want you can check and you will see a button to install here and this is a drop down install after restart then installed plugins all your plugins which are already installed are here so again you can check here you can also see if they are enabled or disabled and if you want to delete them you can click on this delete button in the advanced settings uh, you can use all these HTTP proxy configurations if you want to use all this you can see deploy plugin settings if you want to get a plugin from a file or a URL all this you can do here and then here's a download progress that will show you all the plugins the history as well so you can see what all plugins are downloaded successfully if there was any error it will be displayed here okay so this these are the plugin related settings then uh, you know node related settings are here if you want to add multiple nodes or multiple machines then clouds we have security credentials users here you can add or remove users for this Jenkins we have system information logs uh, if you go to this about Jenkins you can see all the details about your Jenkins the version and all these details are here and then we have more information here about the load statistics then troubleshooting then tools and actions so we will go into any of these settings as and when required as we work with Jenkins but these are the very very basic settings that you must know and I hope this was useful if you have any questions you can let me know I will see you in the next session of Jenkins thank you for watching and never stop learning